I'm Stephanie Donaldson, and over the course of the next four lectures, I'm going to be helping you to get to grips with being an organic gardener. Over the four-week course, I will be presenting a series of lectures that will help you understand both the big issues, in other words, the philosophy behind organic gardening, and the practicalities, in other words, how to do it. I will guide you through the steps you can take to adopt a chemical-free, sustainable, and benevolent way of caring for your garden that will be good for your health and that of the environment while keeping your garden looking great. Lecture 1, The Philosophy and Origins of Organic Gardening. This is an introduction to the subject and the people who have turned an age-old way of tending the soil and growing plants into the most environmentally kind and sustainable way of gardening for the 21st century. I'm an organic gardener, and presumably, given that you've signed up for this course, you are too, or would like to become one. So what is organic gardening? At its simplest, it is cultivating the soil and growing plants without the use of chemical fertilizers, pesticides, or fungicides. Organic gardeners believe that the key to successful growing is to create a healthy soil. It is a safe and sustainable method of gardening that ensures that the soil is passed on from generation to generation in good heart. Done well, it is also the most environmentally friendly way to garden and is now widely recognized as such. So why does this matter? It is easy to dismiss your own small patch of soil as unimportant in the greater scale of things, but this just isn't true. An organic garden is a place where a natural balance can establish itself for the benefit of all its inhabitants. From the beneficial soil bacteria that break down the contents of your compost heap and release fertility, through the myriad of insects, the birds, small animals and amphibians, each has a role to play. Organic gardening is not just about growing your own fruit, flowers and vegetables without recourse to artificial fertilizers or pesticides. It's about promoting biodiversity and helping maintain the chain of innumerable life forms in the process. It is extraordinarily complex and interconnected. For example, did you know that ants are symbiotic with violets, cyclamen and coriolis? There's a fleshy bit on the seeds which they take down to their nests and feed to their young, before taking the seed away to grow elsewhere. So before dismissing anything as a nuisance or irrelevant, we should be aware that everything has a role in the organic garden, even those we would rather be without. When I began organic gardening, we were widely regarded as eccentrics who wanted to turn back the clocks and return to a bucolic 19th century way of gardening. I don't suppose the fact that many of us, myself included, were hippies living an alternative lifestyle helped. But we had all read Rachel Carson's book Silent Spring and we were frightened by her description of the damage being caused by the widespread use of pesticides. Although she was writing about American agriculture in the 1960s, it was clear to us that what she revealed had far wider implications seems extraordinary now that at the time she wrote her book, the chemical DDT was in everyday use in domestic homes and gardens, as well as in agriculture. It was perceived as so safe that it was advertised with a catchy jingle, DDT, good for you and good for me. In sourcing this image for my lecture, I was horrified to find another one for DDT impregnated wallpaper for use in children's bedrooms. It seems unimaginable now, but it was back in the days when science thought it had simple solutions to every problem and the phrase side effects had yet to be coined. 
But in Silent Spring, Rachel Carson uncovered the unforeseen harm these pesticides were having on the environment, particularly on birds. DDT was causing thinning of eggshells, and this was causing reproductive problems and death. Evidence of the damaging effect of this and other chemicals was growing, but the manufacturers had much to lose by going public. Rachel Carson accused them of a cover-up, and public officials of uncritical acceptance of industry claims.